<clears throat> Hello, I am Luos and in this guide slash tutorial for the impact of Vexpack, I'm going to show you a little bit more about the meshes. Keep in mind that this is more of a talk than a real guide and is mainly focused at people who want to make new meshes and want to understand how to approach them. I might not do the best job at it, but I will do my best. So as you can see, a lot of the meshes for the flash effects are red, blue or green and these are vertex colors. I'm going to select one and just select it for a few vertices. And you can see in the added vertex colors that this is red. If I select the green one, obviously those vertices will be green. And this is for a particular reason. Uh, I'm actually controlling each separate layer of the texture in the impact pack in, in Unreal Engine 4. And it basically works that it separates each of these channels. So the red channel is one in this case, the green channel is a two and the blue channel is a 3. Now if I go to 3ds Max again and actually replace the texture I'm currently using with that, those numbers you can sort of see what's going on. This is the 1, the 2 and the 3 and in some cases I'm also combining those with 1, 2, 3 and I'm basically combining each of these parts, a few of them to make something that's more like these flash effects and oh, let me actually select one of them so I can focus on it on. there we go make a bigger one, that one is probably better and as you can see I'm just combining those flat sheets until I got a more volum volumetric flash effect that's scaling in range of 4 so, how to quickly approach something like that? Well, you can just export these meshes because they are also inside of Unreal Engine 4. Um, you can create your own as well. I'm just going to do a very quick example on how to separate each of the colors. So, I'm going to make uh, 30 planes. I'm going to keep it very simple in this case because I don't want to go into too much detail. And there we go, and that should be 3. I'm going to convert them to editable mesh, or editable poly actually. And I'm going to apply the material on them. There we go. As you can see, you can see all three of those textures on it. The R, G, and the green, and the blue channel. Now I'm going to select these and change the color to red for the first one. Okay, you won't see any differences yet. I'm going to do the same with this, but then for the blue, uh, for the green actually. And last but not least, blue for this color. So. Okay. Now I'm going to select all three of them and apply the vertex color modifier on them. Keep in mind though that if you're using alpha channels that uh, 3ds Max might export them wrongly. It's something that they'll never fix. But if you go to the vertex paints modifier and select vertex color display shaded, then you can actually see that you're using the separate layers. This is quite handy. Now you can obviously modify them a little bit there. And in my case, what I do, I just Crap, let me collapse them all first real quick. There. And I just go to the effect pivot only. And move those to the bottom somewhat. It can be a bit more accurate if you want to, but for this tutorial it should be fine. Alright. And now all I do is grab one, rotate it, and get me some rotations okay that's one i was going to do the same with this but maybe four and there and uh, let me move this one a little bit out of the way rotate it and uh, maybe grab something like five or so i have no idea oh, one more apologies uh something like that okay now obviously i would 
normally cut them out just the way I'm doing it here, but for this tutorial, that should be fine. I mean, if you're a modeler, then you can do this yourself, of course. I'm going to really quick attach them all to each other. There. Go to attach. And same with this. Now, I have a simple tool called the Llama Tools, but you can do it yourself as well inside of here. I'm going to just show you. You can repeat it only and send it to object, but sometimes I like to be lazy and use the Llama Tools, which you can find on script spot. Center pivot and center pivot in case I need to. There. Now, all I need to do is play around with them. I'm going to move them all to the main location them all from the rest and then all I do is just rotate them about a bit like that and maybe duplicate one of the, one of the layers there rescale them etc etc and that way you have a new spark and that's basically how I set up all these sparks now these are a little bit different and as you can see, they are just lines. I already have a texture for that setup. I'm probably gonna add the textures uh, in a separate folder in the con in the package if I don't forget. If I do forget and you really want them, please tell me and I'll update the package if I forget. Sorry about that if I do. Okay, I'm gonna go to the material editor and show you this material. That's all it is. So. I'm gonna grab me another plane real quick. There. And then I'm gonna apply that material on it. There. And again, I keep forgetting that it's rotated. Oh man. <coughs> That's fine though. Let's just quickly do it like this. Oh, 90%, please. Thank you. Scale like that. Uh, what the hell? No, only the right channel. Come on. There we go. 3ds Max 2017 and 4K monitor can so it can be very annoying. Okay, um, that's basically how I do these because inside the uh, range of four, it just pans a texture over them, so I can easily make something new and. I think I don't use any vertex colors, but let me double check. Yeah, okay, that's also important. So I fade in from the edge, and I'm not doing that through a texture, but do, through vertex colors. So what I'd like to do is just create an editable poly out of it, and just select this and press the connect button. That's, where are you? Connect, there we are. And obviously I have that in a keyboard shortcut as well there and then just select these vertices and make them red make sure it's at the beginning of the, of the mesh and not at the end and all the others should be black keep that in mind else it won't work so and that's basically how we set up a mesh for what sparks as i called them uh these are a little bit different the bolt impacts again i'm gonna get a plane i should probably start it out like this so i mess it up again and i'm gonna apply another texture on it as you can see i separated this texture in four on the horizontal so i'm gonna put them in like that and as you can see it already changed you can see the outwards arrows on every one of them but it requires a little bit more than just that I'm going to apply it on this mesh there. At the moment, it's the wrong angle, but that's totally fine. I'm just going to unwrap it real quick. Open UV. I'm going to preview the texture. And I need to be sure that it's only um, enveloping one of those arrows. I'm going to select that. 
And I'm gonna... Let's see. Change the U value to 0 0.25. And now we have only one clap. Only one of the... Oh my god, bring, work. Only one of the parts of the texture selected there. Now obviously you can see that this is not correct, but I'm gonna be really lazy in this case. And just do it like this. There. And as you can probably see, the center vertices are all black. So that's something you need definitely need to do as well. Select all the vertices that are available and set the color to black. Else it won't work properly. And now you can create a new mesh out of that. I'm just gonna do something real quick because by now you should get the idea. If you're not a good modeler, I suggest you to find some tutorials first for Blender, 3ds Max, Maya, Moto, Houdini, whatever you're using. Oh. <sighs> Flying away again, there. Uh, what else is there? Um, well, the same can be said for the impact effects in exactly the same way. Um, let's see. I want to redo these eventually, so I'm not going to go over those. I think this is a, might be a good example. Those are the chaos sparks. And this example is proper because I'm actually showing you that each of those whirly meshes as a separate vertex color as you can see i'm gonna just select a few these are red these are blue and if i'm correct the end part is black or at the start i'm not sure anymore yeah only the core here are black so keep that in mind when you're making chaos spark it can be very simple about that you can just make a very simple spline or whatever and get that shape going i can show you a very quick example didn't intend to, but let me just do that real quick. I'm just gonna use the same mesh. I'm gonna select all the lines here, there. Just double click on them. Create shape from selection. Make sure it's a linear shape. Okay. You can do this with any mesh. Normally I just make a very weird shape mesh. I'm not sure if there's any, like something like this, and just select all the lines. It'll have some weird wiggly lines like these. So let's, Pardon me. Grab that line in here. And then go to create compound objects if I'm correct. And loft. Now you need a shape. Uh, let me make that shape real quick. It's quite easy. Again, we need a plane. Very quick one. There. Rotate it 90 degrees or whatever you want. I'm, sometimes I'm using 120, sometimes 90, depends on what I need. So, let's just do it like this. Create the horizontal one, attach the other ones to it. Uh, come on. There, that's better. Create all these lines and press the connect button. There. And when, now you have these selected, create another shape. So create shape from selection, linear again. Okay, and you can delete the normal mesh. Back to that line we made. We're still in the loft mode if I'm correct. If not, then just go back to create compound loft. Then get shape. And in this case, that's this star thing. Okay, you need to set some things though, else it's quite a mesh. A mess, not a mesh. Uh, first of all, we do want mapping applied. That will save a lot of frustration. And then we go to the shape steps and we set them to 1. It's already a lot cleaner. You can even go lower if you want to. There. There's something like this. And now in the loft, you have to create, grab the shape. And that's over here. Then rotate it. It can be quite a mess to do it, but I tend to do it right right first time locally there now you have this weird shape going on you can still rescale it as well if you want to that matches more the, the size of the shape okay and then you can just 
collapse it to an editable poly. Now you can go to unwrap UVWs, open UVW, oh, UV editor, and I'm also going to apply that arrow texture that we have to it. So let's do that right now. There. And refresh the texture list. Get that arrow going. Oh, really hard to tell in my 4K, and I might be hard to read for you people. Then just rotate it to the direction you want. So in this case, I want it to move downwards, and it might be hard to see. Let me separate it real quick. And then you'll get something like this, where the arrow is moving downwards. Might be a little bit better visible if I set the opacity as well. So as you can see, it's moving downwards. So in the in range of four, it will move downwards. Now, all you need to do is select all the vertices, make them all one color. In this case, I'm going to go for red. All right, and select the outer view for these. And if you want the other side as well, I suggest you do. And set those to black. And that's all you need to do for the chaos sparks. Now you need to make a few of these and then you can just move them about a bit. Okay, and change the vertex colors. You can select on vertex color. So let's say I want to select only the reds. I can right click on this, copy, paste it here, select and have all the red vertices selected. And now I can easily make them green or blue, or whatever. And once you have those three colors going on. I'm gonna select it again. In this case, I'm gonna make them blue. Then you're all set with a chaos spark. And this one is a bit more complicated, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Okay, now that I explained that, I'm gonna delete it again. Uh, what else do I need to explain? I think these are the more complicated ones. Pardon, I just ate. Uh, the circles are quite self-explanatory, but let me just go over one. Uh, there, I'm gonna grab the right material for it, which should be here. As you can see, this is uh, vertically aligned, four different textures for different sprites, and Just like the, the lightning bolt, you need to unwrap properly. So I'm going to show it real quick. Open UVs. And as you can see, it's only enveloping one of the four textures in that image. And in range of four, it will automatically swap, swap between each of these four. So you can have four separate textures and it will either automatically swap or you can select which image it will highlight. So it's lower than We'll show this one, else it will show that one and that one. I know it's not the most um, in detailed explanation, but I think if you have any experience with uh, 3ds Max, Maya, or whatever, then you can probably get away with this. You can easily export any of these meshes from Orange 4 and play around with them or totally create your own. Keep in mind that sometimes I'm using vertex colors, so definitely check out the vertex colors when you're playing around with them. And yeah, I think that's all I need to explain in this case. Hopefully it's helpful. Um, anything else I need to talk before I quit? No, I don't think so. I hope it's helpful and yeah, take care. Have a nice day.